us to another episode on ASUG 12 exams. So in this episode, we continue looking at the November 2022 Mathematics Paper 2. So we are now looking at Section B. So the previous episode, we covered question 7. So let us uh, move straight to question 8. So question 8A leads, answer this part of the question on a sheet of graph paper. The variables x and y are connected by the equation in y is equal to basically open bracket x minus 3, close bracket, then open bracket x minus 5, then close bracket, then multiply by x plus 2. Some corresponding values of x and y are shown in the table below. Then Roman numeral 1 calculate the value of k. So basically, to calculate the value of k, what we do in this case is just substituting wherever there is x in this equation, we replace it with a basically 6. Once we do that, we'll be able to find the value of k. So let us proceed to find the value of k. So y is equal to, what's the value of x? You see, basically 6, so 6 minus a 3, then multiply by, then x again, 6 minus 5, then multiply by, then 6 plus 2. So, note that whatever this x, we are putting the value of 6, because the value of x in this case is in uh, 6. These are the values of x, then these are the values of y. So, hence we are finding the value of y. So, let us uh, proceed. So, simplifying this, what we get is 6 minus 3 is basically 3, multiplied by 6 minus 5 is a 1, then 6 plus 2 is 8. So, when we multiply 3, multiply by 1, multiply by 8, we are getting 24. So 24 is basically the value of k. So k is equal to basically 24. We go to a Roman numeral 2 using a scale of 2 cm to represent one unit on the x axis for the interval x is greater or equal to negative 2 but less or equal to 6. And a scale of 2 cm to represent 10 units on the y-axis. For the interval, y is greater or equal to negative 10, but less or equal to 40. Draw the graph, this one. So this graph is basically this one. So the corresponding values of x and y are given to us all the way. So remember, we're just from finding k. So what it is, is we are required to plot this on the graph. So now what is important is following the instruction we've been given. Ensure that uh, when you go on the graph paper, we plot using these units. 2 cm is, for a standard graph paper, is one that box. So from here to here is basically 2 cm. Halfway is 0.5. So 0 to like that. So let me uh, move to the graph paper and basically plot uh, this. Okay, so here we have uh, the graph paper that is uh, completely labeled, which you have to ensure that you label it according to the instruction. So what you need to take note of is basically to ensure that the x-axis is properly labeled and the y-axis is properly labeled clearly. If you go back uh, to the instruction, what you notice in this case, we are told that uh, 2 cm to represent 1 unit on the uh, x axis, then uh, 2 cm to represent uh, 10 units on the y axis. So you notice that from here to here is uh, the standard graph paper is uh, 2 cm. So you notice that the, the intervals are 1 unit in intervals. So, every increment is one unit so make sure that that's the case once you do that the graph will be well scaled then on the y-axis similarly these are two centimeters so this is 10 unit 
so make sure that you label that one properly once you do that it's easier for you to get uh, everything correct so let us now look at uh, basically the points that we need uh, to plot remember we're just from finding k k is 24 so once uh, we do that we start basically uh, just in plotting these uh, points then we start with the first pair which is in this case uh, this pair which is negative 2 comma 0 so the value of x is negative 2 so it's this one then the value of y is that one so i'm going to use the black one so this is at this point then next is negative 1 comma 24 so negative 1 comma 24 so this is 24 25 is halfway here because these are 10 subunits so if 10 subunits and we are increasing by 10 so it will be 10 divided by 10 so each subunit is 1 so what we do here is basically we go to a 25 is halfway so we go to 24 which is just in one unit below so you see that point then next is when the value of x is 0 the value of y is 30 so the value of x is 0 at this point which is the origin then the value of y is 30 so it's at that point then next is when the value of x is 1 the value of y is 24 so you see again along this line so it will be that point then we move next to a basically 2 comma 12 which will be basically along the 2 then comma 12 which is just two subunits above 10 remember each subunit is one unit then we come to this point which is a 3 comma 0 which is this one because the value of y is 0 then we have 4 comma negative 6 so 4 comma negative 6 so it just basically a 6 subunit just above 5 below you see somewhere here then we go to 5 comma 0 which is the value of x is 5 then the value of y is 0 which is this point then we go to a k 24 which is 6 comma 24 so you see again along that line so it will be at that point so once we have these points then the next is for us to join these a point using a smooth line as much as possible so we are going to get a pencil and look for the best a smooth line as much as possible like that then also join this line here like that then like that so we are going to have a graph that looks like that so once you do your graph like that next is basically to a label uh, this uh, function properly so this function is basically y is equal to basically what we have in this case is in uh, x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 5 then multiplied by x plus 2 so we have x minus 3 then x minus 5 then x plus 2 like that so that's in the function so once you do this a uh, base garden you get uh, these three marks so let us move to question loma numero 3 use your graph to estimate the gradient of the curve at point negative 1 comma 4 so we go to negative 1 comma 4 which is this point the second point and draw a tangent line and find the slope of that tangent line basically that is what is required so like we said so just a draw a tangent line let us get a ruler so once we have a ruler then uh placed a ruler clear like this then we can draw a tangent line that uh, just touches the point in negative 1 comma 24 and basically in that case now draw a straight line so once we draw this straight line basically we find uh, the gradient of this a uh, straight line so to find the gradient of this straight, straight line what we need we need uh two things the values of x and those of y so at this point we know the values of x and y which is this one so we call this to be point m then what we need to do is to find the value of x at this point then we find this slope so this is the change in y then this is the change in x 
Then uh, the gradient is basically the change in y over the change in x. So we call this to be point B, which is in this case, B is nothing but negative 2 comma 10. Then A is basically negative 1 comma 24. These are the values. So to find uh, the change, we are moving from uh, basically point A to B. So gradient is equal to basically y at b minus y at a over the value of x at b minus the value of x at a. Then once we do that, basically we find the gradient. So the value of y at b is basically 10, which is this one, minus the value of y at a is basically 24 then over the value of x at b which is negative 2 then minus the value of x at a which is negative 1 so we notice that we are going to have negative 14 over this negative 2 minus negative 1 is basically negative 1 then we end up with 14 so 14 is basically an estimate of the gradient of the curve at basically a which is this one so you notice that here the negative and this negative and negative becomes a positive so it will be negative 2 plus 1 that's why we are getting negative 1 so once you do that basically you are good to go so the estimate is 14 then b of a Roman numero 3 area bounded by the curve x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 0 so you go to the graph so what we have is basically you see x is negative 1 you see this point let me use the black one so you see this boundary then also this boundary then y is equal to 0 so it's this area that we are looking for so you notice that basically these are 10 units from here to here is 10 so 10 times 1 so this is basically 10 plus 10 20 13 then we have 40 then 15 then remember this one is in so this one and this one approximately the 10 10 which is 70 when you had the half of this it will complete the these so you have basically 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 which is in 70 plus in about in uh, half of this which is about basically in, uh, 70 approximately 70 74 so if you add this we are going to get approximately the area should be basically about 74 73 to 75 any interval there could be uh, basically okay so approximately i would do give it a uh, 74 so 74 units uh, square so let us look at question b of question 8 x plus 2 over x plus 5 plus 5 over 3x minus 4 as a single fraction in its simplest form. So the question requires us to express uh, these um, two fractions as a single fraction in its simplest form. Remember there is always a question like this in any mathematics paper two. So what is being assessed here is your ability to deal with uh, basically brackets and negative numbers. So the first step is basically to look for a common denominator. So the common denominator in this case is basically the product of these two. That's normally uh, the case in 95% of the time. So 3x minus 4. This is basically the common denominator. So now what happens in this case now is this into this product what we end up getting is basically this part which is uh, basically 3x minus 4 so this is a 4 then you multiply by that so we are going to have multiplied by a 2 so once you do that then you move to uh, the next one which is basically this one into the whole of that what we end up with is basically getting a positive this one so it will be plus uh, basically x plus basically 5 then multiply by 
this one which is on top which is in a 5 then once you do that uh, basically you just start expanding so it will be 2 multiplied by in uh, 3x you are going to get basically 6x then 2 multiplied by in negative 4 you see basically negative 8 that's it, the first part then the second part is basically 5 multiplied by x so it will be plus in because it is a positive so it will be plus in 5x then 5 times 5 so it will be basically 25 so it's plus 25 then over this whole thing which is x plus 5 then multiply by 3x minus 4 then next is just basically simplifying you collect the like terms so it will be uh, basically now 6x plus 5x then plus 25 then minus 8 because this whole thing is a negative so you see that minus then over basically x plus 5 multiplied by 3x minus 4 then uh, simplifying that one basically we collect the like term so it will be this one plus that one is basically 11x so 25 minus 8 we're going to end up with basically a positive 17 then over x plus 5 then multiply by 3x minus 4 so once you have this you know that uh, there is no number that can go into 11 and 17 at the same time so this is basically how you answer question 8 to get the 12 max thank you viewers for watching uh, this uh, episode if you find this uh, video to be very helpful please consider liking sharing and if you are new to this channel subscribe to our channel once you go to our channel we'll discover that we've got uh, so much content for you you'll notice that we've got a uh, mathematics a uh, physics and chemistry we've also got a section that is uh, arranged by topics you could be uh, finding challenges with a specific topic this is the best section for you